Today we are going to be canning up some pasta sauce with a water bath canning method. If you want to see how we do this, stay tuned. So today we are going to be making these jars of pasta sauce and we like to use this pasta sauce for so many different things. Of course, on spaghetti, we like to use it in lasagna and manicotti as a pizza topping. It's pretty versatile and it can be used in a lot of different recipes where there's a tomato flavor. This video shows you our process. Of course, with any sort of canning, you want to make sure you do your research and you know what you need to do to make it safe. But this is how we've been doing it for a long time and it's worked for us. You will notice in the video that we start by processing some yellow tomatoes. Those ended up being these ones over here. The color actually changed quite a bit and became a lot darker comparable to the red tomatoes on this side. So that was a little disappointing as we had hoped for a nice golden color and it ended up being a little bit more orange and not as much of a yellow color that we had hoped for. Here's the recipe card that we're using today. This is technically basil garlic tomato sauce. I know I keep saying pasta sauce, but I guess that's just what I refer to it as. So here we are getting started processing our tomatoes. I just process them in a food processor and put them in a pot to get them cooked down. Here we are getting them cooked down. I put that bottom rack all the way down and ignore what is happening in the canner there on the side. We were working on another project. Periodically we pull them out and stir them around. The whole purpose in doing this is to get that liquid out of the tomatoes and it does take quite a bit of time but this method with the oven it's kind of set it and forget it. While also pulling them out every couple of hours or so and stirring them. This is exactly the consistency that I'm looking for. Next I'm just going to scoop them into a different pot so that we can get these other pots all cleaned up. We actually have a video on how we reduce our tomatoes if you want to check it out on our channel. We are getting some tomatoes that have already been reduced and a lot of the water has been removed ran through the food mill next. So I have our food mill all set up over here. We have a bucket where the tomatoes are going to go, a bucket where the scraps are going to go, the peels and stems and seeds and all of that. And we're going to just start putting our tomatoes. I'm going to start with our golden tomatoes in the top over here. I'll put a couple scoops in and start turning and our tomatoes start coming out the bottom here. Here's our pusher that helps get them through. Here is the food mill at work. This process kind of does take a little while. I do like to run those scraps that are coming out through the top of the food mill again to make sure we get all of the goodness out into whatever we are making. All right, after all of that food milling, we have our tomato base all ready to go without seeds and any other chunks in there and we're going to get them cooked down a little bit more and add all the final ingredients to get our pasta sauce all ready to go. So this pasta sauce recipe that we are going to be making today, we are going to be tripling it for each of our containers. So three times the card in here and three times what's on the card in here. Let's get it all thrown in and get these jarred up. We are starting off with getting some onions in there. I do use the food processor to process these. I like to pretty much puree them and make them really finely chopped. And now I'm just going to put them into a saute pan to get them sauteed in just a moment once we get a couple more in there. We're also going to get some garlic minced and I do wait to put the garlic in until after the onions have sauteed for a little while. So those are going on the stove next. We add a little olive oil to prevent any sticking and burning, a little salt and a little pepper on top as these saute. Periodically stirring them around. And then now we are adding in that garlic. Now I'm gonna split the batch in half and add half to both pots. Give them a good stir and it's time to start cooking these tomato sauces in just a moment. There they're on the stove now. Since I'm doing this in the off season, I don't have fresh basil. So what I'm throwing in here are some frozen basil cubes and those worked really nicely. I am also gonna add some other basil from the cabinet 
just to give it a little bit more basil. Here goes some salt into each pot. Now the recipe card does not call for sugar, but I did choose to add a little bit of sugar, just a teaspoon into each pot. All right, stirring. Now time to taste test and see if our flavors are where we want them. Okay, so first try was okay, not great. That one was pretty good, but we need to add some adjustments to the orange one. A little bit more salt and give it a little bit more time to kind of cook in there. We're gonna take a couple more samples and try those again. Let it cool off for a moment and the first one, better, it improved, and that orange one, much better. <laughs> okay, so that one is ready to go. I definitely seem to like it there. All right, now we are getting our canning jars in the oven. These were already washed, and I prefer to sterilize our jars this way because I can do so many at a time. We put them in the oven at 250 degrees for about 10 minutes. We are also sterilizing our lids and rings, as you can see there. Uh, the jars are ready to come out and we are ladling everything into the jars. I like to work in batches and we're just going to get this first set of jars all ladled in here. And then in a minute I'm going to, yep, top it off with that other kind. And now we're going to add in our lemon juice and wipe our rims. And now it's time to get some lids and rings on these jars. The magnetic lid grabber is a really handy thing to have. We went years without having one and I'm glad I finally decided to get one. And I just set them off over to the side. We are going to need to water bath two different batches today. So we're going to have some that are kind of cooling off and then they're going to get water bath later. Almost there, last little bit. Looks like we got a good amount of jars this time. Getting every last little bit here into our jars and more lemon juice. Time to wipe the rims again and get some lids and rings on this last little batch of jars here. There we go. All right, time to put them in the canner. When we put them in the canner, we make sure the temperatures are similar, the water temperature as well as the jar temperature. There, we are now boiling, so it is time to set the timer. This recipe calls for a 40 minute water bath for quartz, but we needed to add 10 for elevation. And now it's time to pull them out. Just put them off over to the side, let them cool off. And then in order to put in the next batch, I'm going to remove some of that hot water and put in some cooler water because I want this pot to not be so hot because now, see I'm checking the temperature versus the temperature of a jar and they're about the same. So now we won't crack any jars. We're gonna get that in there and bring it back up to a boil before we start our water bath timer again. And I think, uh, yeah, I accidentally filled a little too much, so we're gonna pull some of that water out before we can finally get our last jar in there. All right, there goes that last jar in, and now we redo the process again. You're probably also noticing that we use a pressure canner as our water bath canner. This is really just for convenience. We just set the lid on top, the gasket is removed, and we do not lock the lid. Well, there you have it. After we got those out of our water bath canner, we just let them cool. And I will go through and take all of these rings off and wash all of the jars just to make sure there's no extra junk on them or anything. And then I will check them all for a good seal like that. I will also listen to make sure they all have a good seal and they sound like they have a good seal. And then we will store them with the ring off in a cool, dry place. And there you have it. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing so we can post some more. Thanks so much for watching.